Hey cruisers, welcome to Cabo San Lucas. It's a beautiful, sunny September day here. In fact, it is today the second day of fall 2021. We're having such a wonderful cruise. This has just been an amazing voyage. So it's our last port day today here in Cabo San Lucas. Again, we're not getting off the ship. Tomorrow is our last sea day, and then we're headed back up to Long Beach where we're going to be disembarking. But let's back up just a little bit and talk about today in Cabo San Lucas. So the ship is having a little bit of propulsion issues still, so our itinerary has been shifted a bit, and we arrived bright and early this morning in Cabo San Lucas at about 6.30 a.m. The sunrise was gorgeous, the arches were coming through, and it was just absolutely spectacular here this morning. Lots of folks got off the ship today and are headed out to do fun things. They're headed out to Medano Beach. They're visiting the arches. They're doing all kinds of different excursions. But today we are staying right here on the ship and we're just going to enjoy, enjoy all the ship has to offer. There's so much still to see and do. So this morning when I got up, there was a big surprise on the pool deck and it was a towel animal extravaganza. There were towel animals on virtually every single pool lounger. They were all over the high top tables at the restaurants. And in addition to that, there were some huge animals laid out. There was a big old octopus and a mock alligator made out of towels and it was so cool. Everybody was out taking photos and just really enjoying one of those great traditional carnival things. After I did a little bit of work down at the Blue Iguana Cantina kind of seating area, I went and grabbed some huevos rancheros. They are definitely becoming my favorite breakfast. I had mine with fried eggs today, so they took a couple of corn tortillas. I requested corn instead of flour. They slathered them with refried beans and chicken, and then they put two fried eggs on top. And then I headed over to the salsa bar and doctored them up with cilantro and salsa and all that yummy goodness. Now we are just out and about. We're going to go um, check out some more of the ship and uh, see what today brings. We're not sure what we're going to do. We really have no plans at all. Um, if you haven't, by the way, seen our vlog from yesterday from the mega deck party, you definitely want to go back and check that one out. It was unbelievable. So much fun. Everyone was dressed in white and cruise director Lee really brought the fun. So we'll link to the vlogs that you've missed. If you haven't been catching up on this series in the comments below. All right, let's go explore Carnival Panorama together. Ooh, I just stumbled upon the bar menu up at Serenity. I didn't know it was completely different but we're headed up there to see what they have. They have sangrias, skinny cocktails, frozen cocktails, and regular cocktails. So let's go check it out. The Serenity Bar is wonderful and it feels like your own private space on the ship. My husband and I spent a good 30 minutes up there and I ended up settling on the coconut martini, which is so good. It's refreshing. It has a little coconut water in it. It doesn't look like anything special when it's poured in the glass, but it tastes so good. It's kind of tropical and refreshing. It's like the perfect spa cocktail if there is such a thing. Speaking of spa cocktails, Serenity has their own cocktail menu and it's pretty comprehensive. They have lots of different sangrias to choose from. They even have some skinny cocktails. They have a selection of frozen drinks. There's quite a bit going on up there, so don't miss it. We also found that the bar staff up there was exceptionally friendly and their cleaning routine is amazing. They were bleaching down the um, bar top and it was just super impressive. It felt like a very professional operation and we just felt kind of pampered and spoiled up there. It felt very um, kind of upscale. Um, ended up talking to a friend up there for a little while. And while we were doing that, it was something crazy happened. The ship's horn blew because we were leaving Cabo San Lucas and that horn is so loud in that particular area. The horn must be positioned right in serenity because we were all completely shocked. My husband was joking that he saw insects like fly up in the air because it was so loud. Anyway, after that, we buzzed down to the Lido and had some lunch. We did our typical salad bar routine. Junior went and got himself a guy's burger with some chili on it. We had some of the hot food at the buffet. It was actually a very nice experience today at the buffet. They had both of the areas open, which was awesome. We're getting ready to go to formal night. Mr. Cruz Tips TV is trying to balance while he's filming me, but I wanted to let you know why we've been filming so much in our room. There's a lot of music that plays around the ship and we're not allowed to play 
copyrighted music on YouTube. Just so you know, if you see us filming in here and not out on open decks or by the pool as much, we would love to, but we can't do that on our YouTube channel, unfortunately. So we're trying to mix it up and find like quiet hallways and things, but sometimes it's just gonna have to be here in our room where we don't end up with a copyright strike. So gonna get ready for formal night, get glammed up for our last formal night on the cruise and go check things out. We might actually even stop by the casino real quick and redeem our $25 casino credit that you get when you move from gold to platinum on Carnival. My husband and I want to want to see what that's like. So maybe we'll maybe we'll catch us in the casino. We're glammed up and ready to go on our way down to dinner at the main dining room for formal night. And guess what, y'all? I found my drink of the day. I'd like you to meet the Papa Doble from the Havana Bar. I've been wanting to find a special drink at the Havana Bar all week. I've been looking at the menu, but every time I've gone down there, it's been a little bit crowded. So tonight I got lucky and there was a wonderful bartender who helped me to make a decision, knowing my preferences of not super sweet. So the Papa Doble is rum, maraschino liqueur, which is surprisingly not sweet. In fact, almost has a little spice to it and it has grapefruit juice and lime. And it's kind of martini style, but it's so good. There's something about that maraschino liqueur and it's so good that I asked to see the bottle so that I can buy it when I get home. Maybe we'll make some yummy cocktails with it this fall. It's been a really fun afternoon and we're just gonna head down to the dining room and say hello to our staff and maybe enjoy some filet mignon. And I see that it is on the menu. And then we're going to touch base with you again after dinner and kind of close out this series of cruise vlogs because this is going to be the last day that we're vlogging. So we'll kind of sum everything up for you. But we are just a wee bit late. So we're gonna head out right now for that main dining room. great final night for our cruise. Formal night was awesome. And the main dining room food tonight was really good. Second to my Indian vegetarian dish that I had the other day, tonight was probably some of the best food that we've had in the MDR for the whole cruise. I had the shrimp entree, Junior had the filet mignon, and Mr. Cruise Tips TV had some delicious teriyaki salmon over noodles that was really good. And our starters were great too. I had um, stuffed mushrooms that really exceeded my expectations, crab cake for Mr. Cruise Tips TV, and clam chowder and a salad for Junior. So really, really good dinner tonight. I was loving it. After that, we went up to the arcade and had some fun. Junior's been more than impressed with the arcade on this particular cruise ship. He loved it. Before we kind of do a little overview of our trip, I want to just share something that I was thinking about today. And that is that there are some things I really love about Carnival. We cruise with a lot of different cruise lines. And we love all of them, like all of them for different reasons. But there are five specific things that I wrote down on my little phone today that I just love about Carnival. And I feel like they're small things. They're like concepts and feelings and they're also physical, you know, um, a part of the Carnival brand. But I wanna go over them with you. The number one thing I think I love about Carnival is the parties. The sail away parties, the theme parties, the 80 night, 80s night, the mega deck parties. Carnival knows how to party. And if you like to party, Carnival is a really good choice of cruise line for you. It is music filled, it is loud, there's music everywhere, there's always a party happening on Carnival. And when you're in the mood for that, it is awesome. Number two, I love Carnival specialty dining. Guy's Burgers, Blue Iguana, my goodness sakes, the steakhouses, the Japanese food and sushi on this ship, it's really, really good. Even the Seafood Shack 
think Carnival is really nailing it with their specialty dining, and I don't mind having those upcharge restaurants available to me. I'm willing to pay more where there's an opportunity for it, of course. Some of those that I just mentioned are free, like Blue Iguana and Guys. Another thing that I love about Carnival, and I know a lot of you already agree with me on this, is those aft pools. They're so great, they're dramatic, they overlook the wake, and they just attract a lot of fun people and fun conversations, and they're just great. There's something really special special about a Carnival aft pool, right? Wouldn't you agree? Number four, Carnival really does hold on to some of the cruise traditions that we love. Like I mentioned those deck parties to the set dining times that they still have, even the towel animals. Like when we woke up this morning, you guys, there was a towel animal takeover on the pool deck, like I mentioned earlier. I like that stuff. I like the stuff that when I went on my first cruise as a 17 year old, still feels the same. I can still go to formal light if I want to. I can still dine at six o'clock or eight o'clock if I want to. And I can still get a gosh darn towel animal. Love those traditions with Carnival. They are some of the best things. Now, I want to say too that Carnival really has become more casual over the years. And that's another attraction is that even though there's the traditions, if you want to wear a t-shirt to formal night, guys, you can. Um, we saw it tonight. There were people in Crocs and t-shirts and there were people in ball gowns and there's just no judgment on Carnival. That's another thing that's so fantastic is that you can be who you want to be on Carnival without any shame. Number five, oh, this is a last but not least one for sure, the crew. I've never been on a carnival ship where I was not treated like a queen. And you will be too. A king, a queen, a princess, a prince, whatever it is you want to be treated like. I feel like I have no idea how they do it. I just don't know how a value cruise line does such an incredible job, how the dining staff, um, the the room stewards, how they know my whole family's name on the first day. It's just a very special feeling. So those are just some thoughts that I had about Carnival in general. It was a really great day today. Tomorrow, we do have a sea day. We're not going to vlog. We typically need to take a few days off to do other types of work on our cruises these days, and that's what's happening tomorrow. We do have a few things going on. Junior's getting his COVID test at 1030 tomorrow morning. We have a... Um, we have a dinner reservation tomorrow night, and we are going to go see the show Celestial Strings. We popped in really quickly after formal night tonight and just saw a few minutes of Celestial Strings, and it is phenomenal, and I really cannot wait to go back and catch the whole thing. The performance has really modern, up-to-date music, which I love. It's like contemporary music. I get a little bit tired of like the decade shows, like 70s music and the Motown ones. I like them, but it's really nice to have a change. And this one just had so many elements of really advanced costume design and set design and theatrical, um, just incredible theatrical talent that I want to go see the whole thing because I was completely blown away and it was really impressive. So that's what we're doing tomorrow. But, um, Lots of other episodes coming for you. Of course, we have our daily blogs on the website as well. They're like trip reviews, trip diaries for you that you can read and see photos where we kind of go over the highlights of the day, the venue of the day, drink of the day. We talk about foodie fun, and we kind of tell the story of our cruise in a different way, in a written format. So be sure to check those out as well. Also, if you want to hear about our hits and misses from this cruise, we are going to be recording a podcast when we get home. Just search for Cruise Tips TV Unplugged wherever you listen to podcasts and we'll kind of go over our hits and misses. And we're also going to film a standalone episode or, or record a podcast on was this cruise different in this post-pandemic or pandemic era? How did it feel? What did we think about Carnival safety protocols? I was going to talk about that tonight, but I realized it deserves a whole episode. And I know that you all probably are kind of feeling like, okay, let's talk about that separately and later because there's so much to cover. But we appreciate all of you following along with us on this Carnival Panorama series. We do have four other vlogs in this series, so go back and check those out because we really hit all the fun on the ships from the Sky Ride to the Sky Course to the Sports Square to lots of different dining. Um, it's just, there's a lot to see, there's a lot to do, and we hope that you choose to give Carnival Panorama a try if you have enjoyed watching um, our vlogs. A real quick note about the cabin that we chose here. We picked a spa cabin, which was great. We paid a little bit more money for the spa cabin than a regular cabin. We loved it. It was really nice to be in a quiet area up high on the ship. I think we booked a little too close to the pool deck. Um, there was a little bit of pool noise at times at night during late night deck parties, but that was always over with by like 11.15. But hindsight, we could have just moved a little farther towards the front of the ship. 
and it would have been a non-issue. And truthfully, I did not use the thermal suite enough on this cruise. That doesn't mean I wouldn't book, um, book a spa cabin again because I like the location and I like the amenities, but I feel like I didn't use the thermal suite to the degree that I could have. It's an included perk. So something good for you to think about when you're booking these cabins. Uh, the family harbor suite uh, that we got to check out was absolutely stunning. So if you're traveling with a larger family and you need a little more space, like two bathrooms, really check out the family harbor because you have access to that awesome lounge as well. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. We appreciate all of you so much and we hope that you'll subscribe to our channel here, Cruise Tips TV, and give this video a quick like before you go. Again, we appreciate all of you. And until next time, we'll see you on the high seas.